Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video series. In the last video, we set up Cloudflare to act as our DNS provider so that we could translate our public IP address on our router hosting our website to our domain name. That way, in the future, when we want to visit our website in a browser, we can just type in our domain name. The changes we made can take 48 hours to take effect on the internet. So in the meantime, we're going to have a look at encryption why we need it, how it fits in with our existing architecture on our Pi, and what we're going to do to implement it. So any data transferred over the internet without encryption should be considered public. As a result, we can't store any personal information on our website. We can't have any login screen. We can't have any contact form. And for a CMS like WordPress, this isn't OK, because WordPress necessarily requires a login system. So we absolutely need encryption. Also, people and browsers don't trust a website that doesn't have HTTPS. Therefore, it's bad for your reputation of your website if you don't have it. So it's absolutely essential. So let's have a look at the architecture and where we're at at the moment. So at the moment, we've got a SQL database and a WordPress website, both running in separate containers, communicating to each other within their own network. But what we're missing is this Nginx reverse proxy container, which will translate the port 443 encrypted traffic coming through the router into port 80 going to the WordPress website. This kind of port changing and encryption checking service is typically provided by an Nginx or an Apache reverse proxy. OK, so what is a reverse proxy? Well, in short, it provides a place between the router and the application in which actions can be performed. And the common actions performed by reverse proxy are, as mentioned, a redirection to a particular port, URL or path. Additional authentication can be provided in that gap in between the router and the app. And we can perform specifically encryption checks and we can port forward specifically 443 to port 80, which is what we're going to be doing in this video. So what's Nginx all about? Well, Nginx is actually a HTTP server and reverse proxy, and it's the latter point that we're going to be exploiting it for. So we're going to be adding, excuse me, we're going to be adding Nginx to our Docker Compose configuration. That's the first thing we're going to do in this video. And then once we've done that, we're going to run our website as normal and just check that everything's running as it should. Now, the Nginx reverse proxy in this case won't actually be doing anything in particular. We're just going to have it sitting there between our router and our app just to check that the container is running correctly. After this, we'll be able to start implementing a port forward action of 443 into 80 and we can start getting encryption working on our website. So I'll see you on the desktop in a few moments where we're going to set up our Docker Compose file to accept an Nginx container as part of our configuration. OK, so we're on my desktop. On the left, I've got a shell open pointing to my Pi and I'm in the website directory. So if I type in PWD, you can see the location I'm in. The website directory is where we've got our Docker Compose file and is basically where we're going to be hosting the website. On the right hand side, we've got the Visual Studio Code editor, but I'm using an SSH tunnel to tunnel into the Pi so that I'm able to edit the text files within a text editor like this. So these files exist on the Raspberry Pi. So for example, if I type in ls, we can see docker compose yaml and docker file, and that's these two files here. Okay, let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to do to avoid confusion is remove the new from the WordPress underscore new container name. I used that previously to distinguish our docker compose WordPress image from the base WordPress image, but it's no longer needed. And I think that's just going to be confusing. So I'm going to delete that. The next thing I'm going to do, similarly to how we did it for the database, is I'm going to create a new directory for the Nginx Docker container. So create a new folder. I'm going to call it Nginx, enter. So I've now got two folders in the website directory, which I will confirm on the left hand side here. There we go, Nginx and database. Within the Nginx directory, like we did with the database container, we're going to create a new file and it's going to be a new Docker file. And the Docker file is simply going to contain the following from Nginx 
latest. Oops. This should be familiar. This is exactly the same syntax we used when we created our database container. The from statement is always the first statement in a Docker file, and it is saying, take from the, in this case, from the Docker registry, the Nginx image, and I want the latest version. So with that done, we now need to edit the Docker compose file in order to make use of this Docker file. So I'm just going to get rid of the Nginx open folder here to tidy it up, and I'm going to go into the Docker compose file. So this is what it looked like in a previous video where we set up the database and WordPress Docker Compose services. Now we're going to add an additional service called Nginx. Nginx container name. Actually, let's use the same ordering, build. Now, like with the database container, I'm going to be going into the Nginx directory so that Docker Compose knows where to find the doc file. Then I'm going to say container name and I'm going to call it Nginx. This is all very similar to what we did with the database container. Now I'm going to expose some ports. For the time being, in this first video on this subject matter, we're going to simply be exposing port 80. So we're going to be doing 80 on our Raspberry Pi to 80 within the container. Then we're going to be using a network so that the Nginx container can talk to the database and WordPress containers. So I'm going to type in networks. Actually, let's save ourselves some hassle. I'm going to copy and paste a previous one. There we go. And in this case, I'm going to change the alias to Nginx proxy so that it's different from the WordPress alias. Okay, so just to review, we've created an additional service. We've pointed it to the Nginx folder, so it'll find the Docker file in there. And we know that that Docker file will run the Nginx image. We've exposed port 80, so that the Raspberry Pi port 80 is now mapped to the uh, container port 80. And we've given it the same network as the other containers. So if we run this now, let's see what happens. So to run it, we type in docker hyphen compose up minus D. So I've done that on the left in the shell. That is a standard command to take up all of the containers within the docker compose file and to run them in detached mode, so in the background. Okay, you can see here that we had to pull from the docker registry the Nginx image. That's because we didn't have this image on our computer yet, on our Raspberry Pi whereas we did have the database and the, and the WordPress images ready available. Okay, so with, with that done, if we type in docker container ls, we should see three containers running. But of course, we don't actually know what's going to happen. This is an interesting scenario. We've got an Nginx uh, reverse proxy running, but we've not really made it interact in any way with our WordPress container. So let's run our uh, domain name in a browser and see what happens. So if we type in our domain name, in my case it's singleentity.com, into a browser I get the welcome to nginx uh, default HTML page. What this is basically saying is you've got nginx installed correctly but we're not doing anything at the moment. I'm not forwarding your traffic anywhere. Okay so that's all well and good. Now we need to actually configure nginx to forward our traffic. To do that, we need to edit the configuration file. The configuration file exists within the Nginx container. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a configuration file outside of the container on our Raspberry Pi, and then we're going to copy it into the container at runtime, just as Docker is spinning up the machine. So let's create a new file within the Nginx container, and let's call it website.conf for configure. And in here, we're going to add the following lines of code. Server, curly braces, listen 80. This means that it's going to be listening to port 80 from our router. Server name, you need to substitute in your name, your domain name instead of mine here. So I'm going to type in singleentity.com, end with a semicolon. And then location, forward slash, because we don't want to forward to any particular 
folder or directory within our server, we're going to do instead a proxy pass, which is defined as follows, proxy underscore pass, and we're going to pass the traffic from port 80, if it matches the domain singleentity.com, to the following, http forward slash forward slash WordPress, that's the name of our container, port 80. So note that that name here, WordPress, absolutely has to match the name of your container. Next, proxy set header host http underscore host. That's a bit of boilerplate that I won't explain what that does. It, it just puts it in as it is. And that's it. That'll do. That's all we actually need. The important parts are here that you have your domain written in for the server name and that you're using port 80. For now, we're using an unencrypted connection and that we make sure we have the name of your container written here, which is what we're forwarding onto. So you can see what's happening is traffic is coming in on port 80. It's coming from this domain and it's being forwarded on to WordPress, the container WordPress on port 80. OK, right. Now, this won't do anything because it's just a website.conf file. It's not being used. So what we need to do is we need to get this website.conf file into the Nginx container so it can get used. So let's open the Docker file where we've got from Nginx colon latest, which we created earlier. And we can add a couple of lines. Now, this is the first time in this video series so far that we've added more than one line to a Docker file. And with Docker, though, though I don't want this to become a Docker course, we can add as many lines as we like to customize how our container behaves. And in this case, we're going to first off delete all other configuration files that exist on the Nginx, uh, in the Nginx container. So etc forward slash nginx forward slash conf dot d forward slash star. So that is literally a Linux command. So once the container is running, it'll run a rm command into this directory, which is basically saying delete any existing configurations. Then we're going to copy in the configuration that we've just created. So dot slash website dot conf. So that means reference the current directory. And that's relative to where the Docker file is, which of course is here inside our nginx folder. So reference the current directory and copy website.conf, which is this file, and put it in basically the directory we've just cleared out. So I'll just copy and paste it. And then I'll add the name again to make sure it has the same name. And that's it. So now what will happen is when nginx is spooled up, the container is spooled up, It'll delete existing configurations and it'll copy in our configuration file, which, as mentioned, simply forwards on the traffic from port 80 directly into our WordPress container, which means it does nothing at all different to how it's currently being done. But it will show that the system is working as it should. And if this works properly, we shouldn't be getting the Nginx default page anymore. OK, so because I've made changes to the Docker compose file, I'm going to type in docker compose down to take down the containers first. Now I'm going to type in docker hyphen compose build. This is so that we can accommodate any changes we've made. And we have of course made changes to the docker compose file. So now it'll build our changes and you can see these, these are changes we've made in the docker file that form part of the docker compose system. With that done, we can bring the containers up docker hyphen compose up. Oh, sorry. Docker compose up minus D must use detached mode so that I don't lock out my terminal. OK, with that done, let's have a look at our browser. So I'll drag it in. I'm going to use control F5 to reset my refresh my page without cache. And there we go. This is our default WordPress container being displayed through the Nginx reverse proxy. So this is working nicely. In the next video, we're going to set up the all important certificate so that we get encryption within our reverse proxy and we can start using HTTPS instead of HTTP. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do like it. And if you would like, please do subscribe to my course. You'll get new video updates as they come out and any other programming related material I produce, particularly on Raspberry Pis, will be put on this channel. So thank you very much 